go, here they go. Coming to the green, coming to the green. So the flat guy out there, he's gonna go make sure they're at the proper pace. You can see the other guy way up there, he's gonna make sure to wave the green flag to give all these guys the good go to start racing. This stuff is cool, man. I've always wanted to be around this kind of atmosphere. And here we are, right in the heart of it. So let's go. Buggy, buggy, buggy. Let's go racing. Here they come. viewers so these next couple of clips are just going to be random b-roll so i can say what i need to say so since i started working at the racetrack um it's been about i think it's just about to hit a month i've had a good time so far and i've learned a lot there's been a lot of long days to be honest because most days i'm standing out there flagging but i couldn't ask for a better place to be you know as far as racing goes because as i stated and if this is your first time watching, racing is one of my biggest passions, motorsports and cars. And I've always wanted to be a part of it and get into a car myself. So being here is one of the greatest opportunities I've had in a very long time. And I'm very grateful. So, yeah, I mean, as time has gone, I've just been learning little by little about karting and learning the techniques of the racing lines, etc. So yeah, like I said, a lot of great opportunities have been popping up. The other day, I was able to get a free ticket to go watch NASCAR at Watkins Glen International. And NASCAR is my favorite motorsport. All thanks to the guy who owns the racetrack that I work at. His name is Tim Hannon. Shout out to him. So in these next clips, this was pretty much after a long days of work. My friend Gideon, shout out to him. He's the one who got me the job. He was just giving me some lessons around the racetrack, you know, points of where to break, um, which lines to take, etc. So yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, getting racing lessons. Kind of help you in your life. Jen, off your palm for a second, and then you get right back off. And then by the time I'm already turned in and here, back on the gas. So what that's going to do is help rotate the car. And notice I didn't hit that curb and that's on purpose because I don't hit it in the car. Right. That helps getting out on the gas early helps rotate the car and it helps keep the R as R is up with your Gotcha. Back all the way out. Okay. Right at the top of the track. So sometimes I see guys kind of like go all the way here and then there. That's kind yeah, of unnecessary. It, uh, no, it, it's very unnecessary. Most of the time when they're doing that, they're blocking. They're trying to keep somebody from making the pass. Okay. Uh, here, in the 206, I'm just lifting. You lift right before you turn in, or as you turn in sometimes. And then uh, right back on the gas again. But this time, you're waiting basically until the heat comes. Okay. Because all you did was lift. Because you didn't get on the brakes, yeah. you don't really need to get on the gas that hard either. So you just kind of lift, wait for the apex, get back on, track all the way out again. Okay. Here. I always have trouble here. Here. Uh, you want to be in the middle of the track on entry. You don't want to be all the way out there. Uh, two reasons. One, you don't really have enough horsepower to get you through the corner quick enough so that people won't pass you going in here. And the track is massively wide here, so there's no reason for you to use all this track. Like, this is your track out for corner entry. It's the middle of the track. Stay here, again, in the 206 with the red zone. I'm just lifting. Yeah. Do this part of the corner. 
Once you feel the cart rotate mid corner here, yeah. here you should be pointed right at the wall and looking at that curbing. And once okay. you're here is when you start squeezing the gas back on. There's not many times that where you squeeze on the gas in the 206, here is one. Yeah. And that's just because you don't want to upset the cart on the way out. And your track out should be nowhere, you shouldn't even look at those curves. That means you tra tracked out or turned in, turned too late. Basically, if you're by the curve, you should just look right at that uh, divot and get away from it. Okay. Gotcha. Good so going. here in the 206, you're not really braking either. Uh -huh. uh, just like the last three corners, right? We were we lifted into two, then we lifted again into three and four. Yeah. But the difference between these two, five and six, and three and four is in three and four, you're waiting to get on the gas, so you avoid that hop. Yeah. Here, you're almost instantly back on the gas. I'm literally just lifting on turn in. And like I said, I try to use some of this curb to slow me down on the way in. But then I'm right back on the gas. And this is where I was talking about hitting the curb right. If you hit it straight like this, like you're going for the wall, it's like a ramp. And you can literally turn the cart the rest of the way on the curb. But if you hit it like on the side, it just hops the cart out and you end up losing momentum. Here, yeah. This is a real comfort on the brakes uh, spot. Mm -hmm. See, last week there was cones here. Now there's none. So you don't really want to use cones as your visual. And that's why I gave you the shed going into turn one, just because they can move. Now, here you're gonna want to start braking here for comfort, and okay. it's going to end up a lot later in the 206. But starting here gives you a good idea of the limit and knowing that you can push deeper and deeper and deeper. So I would start breaking here-ish, basically when you can see the curbing for the exit of four on your left, and when you're on the brakes. And here you're on the brakes for a good bit. This is really the only spot on the track where you're using the brakes to slow the car down. But by the time you're at this curbing, you should be all the way off the brake. Rolling, 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 and then at the end of this curbing is where you turn it. Turn in. Keep your head down at the apex. By the time you're here, like not here, but a little bit backwards, you're on the gas. On the gas, trying to get the gas to rotate the cart the rest of the way. And you're gonna end up by the wall most of the time. But I coach everybody that the goal is to be in the middle of the track when you exit here. Because then you this left hand turn is in that sharp. No matter where you end up here though in your cart, you turn left immediately. And you follow the curve basically all the way around. Because all that is just extra waste track and waste time. Yeah. Here, your both left hands, both left side tires should be over the blue. Not any further, just on top of the blue. And then gotcha. the same thing here. And you just make this as straight of the line as possible. Gotcha. Go over <laughs> both of those curves. We're still on the gas from when we got back on the apex of the air, but this is a flat out corner. Flat out, yeah, I always go flat out, yeah. This is my favorite corner. Yeah. <laughs> Here again, you're using the brakes kind of like in turn one, a quick second over these bumps just yeah. to slow it down. Mm -hmm. But then when you turn in, you feel this dip here. Yeah. This is oh, where shit. you get most of your turn in done. When you hit the dip, you, you're gonna kind of just baby the wheel on the way to the dip. But then when you hit the dip, the rest of the cart comes around and you should be back on the gas coming out of that dip. Gotcha. Left two tires, again, have to hit this curb every line. If they don't hit that curb, you're going to hit that one and that is no problem. Yeah, that's what happened last time. Yep. And that's a lot. Gotcha. So, basically in the 206, you're barely ever using the brake, right? You're really using some of the slide of the go-kart and the grip of the tires to slow the cart, the, the cart down more than anything. Yeah. The, the slowing down of the cart isn't happening on the brakes in the 206. Yeah. It's happening on the turn. The turn wheel, dig this rubber into the ground, that's when the cart's slowing down. And that's why you can get back on the gas so early because that's going to break the cart free of that grip. And so like once you're here, you need to straighten the wheel out basically as you're coming through. And you're using the power of the go-kart to kind of keep it straight. Makes sense. Really smooth on the wheels in the 206. Right? Choppiness is just going to have you all over the place. You want to turn the wheel once on the way into the corner, once back to straight. Here you come wide. Not too wide though. One on the way in. Keep the same 
steering angle, and then once back to straight. But if you're going to the corner like this, and you're hard on the way in, getting it rotating now, the car's bouncing all over the place, and you're sawing the wheel like a sprint car driver all the way through the corner. Look how much longer it took us to get through that corner yeah. than it did the one before. Hell and yeah. it's the same thing. I know we're in a golf cart, but it's the same, same reason thing. in a go cart. Gotcha. It just doesn't, you're not, anytime the wheels aren't going straight, you're not going as fast as you can. And now, obviously, there's turns on the track, so it's not supposed to be going straight the whole time. Right. But the idea is to keep it as straight as possible right. to promote as much speed as you can. Makes sense. That's the whole Carding 101 with Gideon Gadsden. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Yes, sir.